I got a video request from a viewer and uh, just real quickly I want to say thanks I mean I love the video requests uh, I like getting other people involved and you know sometimes I run out of ideas for videos so it helps me out if somebody puts in a request for a specific video on a certain plant or survival skill or bushcraft topic anything gardening you name it I'm more than happy to uh, fulfill those requests the best I can so thanks for that and uh, I want to encourage everybody to you know please you know if there's something you'd like to see just ask and I'll be happy to do a video on it but the request was on my amaranth seeds video where I went out and harvested and and uh, cooked the amaranth seeds they wanted me to do an identification video on amaranth and maybe also show some other plants to look out for when you're harvesting amaranth so that's what this video is going to be about the identification of amaranth and also uh, another closely related plant that's in the same family goosefoot or lamb's quarters as some people call it and then also we'll look at one other plant that's in the aster family but could be mistaken for either goosefoot or amaranth and that's common ragweed right, the first thing that you would want to know is where does it grow because you're not going to be able to identify it if you can't find it and, and this is it. It grows in fields, it grows in places where the ground is disturbed, and you're going to find all three of these plants growing in these areas. Gardens are a really good spot to find them, or any place else where the soil has been disturbed. They like salty, nitrogen-rich soil. Now this here is the amaranth plant. You can see the inflorescence, or seed heads. I'm going to try and give you a shot of the plant as a whole and then I'm going to give you some nice detailed images to compare these look-alike or imposter plants. Now this one here is lamb's quarters. You can see it's got similar seed heads. And lamb's quarters, or goosefoot, is in the same family as amaranth. They're both in the goosefoot family. And just make a quick note that the leaves can look different. Now these are lance-shaped leaves, which are different than what I'm going to show you later. But if you go down further on the plant, you can find the more typical goosefoot shaped leaf. And a lot of times these will be fringed in purple and they will repel water. If you put a drop of water on there it will beat up. Now this right here is ragweed, common ragweed. But you see it gets a seed head as well but if you look closely at these seed heads, you'll notice that they're actually individual flower heads that have a stem that attaches to that central stalk. Now this here is curly dock. It gets a seed head too, but it's dark brown and it's completely different. It doesn't branch out the way that the other plants I'm showing you do and if you look at the base it has these big curly long leaves so it's important to pay attention to every part of the plant when you're trying to identify these not just the seed head or the leaf or the stem the whole plant now it's, it's kind of noisy and windy out here today and really to show you these plants I'm gonna to have to take some photos to get some good close-up images so the rest of this video is gonna be photos with a voiceover 
Alright, so bear with me. This is the first time I've done a voiceover. This is somewhat of an experiment. Uh, but this first photo shows the amaranth leaf on the left and the goosefoot leaf on the right. And the important things to notice is notice how the amaranth leaf looks a lot rougher in texture than the goosefoot leaf and also the goosefoot leaf on the right has a purple fringe around the outside edge also the leaf stem on the goosefoot is purple now what we're looking at is the seed head or the inflorescence of the amaranth and goosefoot amaranth is on the left goosefoot is on the right now keep in mind that these seed heads can vary in size greatly but the thing to look for is notice how the amaranth seed head on the left is a little more bristly looking than the goosefoot on the right and also the the goosefoot tends to appear more like little round balls versus spiky structures now this third image I don't really think it's a requirement but nevertheless this is an identification video and I think it's important to show it it's the root on the left is amaranth on the right is goosefoot and the main thing to notice here is that the root on the left which is amaranth is red in color the root on the right which is goosefoot or lambs quarters is white also the amaranth on the left tends to have more of a pronounced tap root now I'm going to show you one more photo of the seed heads and this one is to show the plant on the bottom which is goosefoot hopefully you can see how white it is notice the underside of the leaves are white compared to the top side of the leaves and also notice how white it looks compared to the green amaranth above that's where goosefoot gets its latin name chenopodium album album means white in latin now this photo is showing the underside of the leaves on the left is amaranth on the right is goosefoot and you can notice on the right goosefoot leaf uh, you don't notice a lot of that purple coloration especially in the leaf stem you typically see that on the top side of the leaf and also it doesn't really have that white appearance that I told you about before so just keep in mind that nothing in nature is concrete there can be little distinct differences but as long as you match up all these characteristics you'll have the right plant okay so now this is the leaf of the common ragweed the one other plant that you may mistake this amaranth or goosefoot for based on the seed head but you notice without describing the leaf just by looking at it you can tell that it is entirely different than either goosefoot or amaranth so there should be no mistake in it always check the leaf and just for comparison I want to show you the ragweed flower head up top and the amaranth flower head down below now to me I look at those and they're completely different I'll show you one more image a little more close up of the ragweed and explain it a little better okay so this is the close up of the ragweed flower stem and if the main thing to notice here is there are individual flower heads that have a stem that attaches to the main stem you won't see that in amaranth or goose now I'll give you just one more really
close up image of a ragweed flower head and you should notice that it looks similar to another aster family plant the sunflower you can see the little petals and inside are little individual seeds now I'm not going to get into the technicalities of what an aster flower is made up of that's not important but the point is there should be no mistake in ragweed for either amaranth or goosefoot as long as you pay attention to these little details alright guys I'm gonna try and keep these short but I do wanna show you the images and explain what to look for as well so this image is the stems of both the amaranth on top and the goosefoot down below and the main thing I notice when I look at this is they have alternate branching although they could have opposite branching so don't get hung up on that but the amaranth up top is red and the goosefoot down below is purple that's the main thing to keep in mind so hopefully that helps you out if you're interested in identifying amaranth um, that's my first voiceover and uh, likely won't be doing any more so hopefully nobody makes a request for another voiceover video. But anyway, um, I think it's important for, for that plant in particular because good detailed images uh, are important and it looks very similar to Goosefoot and a couple other plants. So I think it's, it should help you out. A couple other things though is when you're learning about these plants, um, for me it's a lot easier to learn about a family of plants versus just one plant in particular. So the goosefoot and amaranth is a, a really good plant to show that because they are related. They're both in the goosefoot family and they're both edible. But a few other plants that are in the goosefoot family that you can observe in your garden are spinach, beets, Swiss chard. All three of those are in the goosefoot family. So you should be able to see similar characteristics in those plants as well, especially this time of year when those uh, spinach and chard plants start to bolt up and get the little seed heads on them you, you should notice a, a similarity another thing to keep in mind is this video is only covering chenopodium album which is goosefoot or lambs quarters and green amaranth or a, what other people call red root, red root pigweed or amaranthus retroflexus now there are just a whole bunch of different varieties of amaranth so the amaranth that you have may have a red seed head or it may be completely different you'll just have to um, kind of observe the plant and get familiar with what's in your area I mean this is pretty much region specific to Michigan and the surrounding states and really amaranthus retroflexus grows all over North America all the way up into Alaska it even grows in Hawaii so you will likely be able to find this plant growing around your house another thing to keep in mind and yeah I'm using a cheat sheet is uh, not only is amaranth good for food for those little seeds but the, the, the whole entire seed head and flower head is edible the leaves are edible even the stem is edible and the root is edible too it's also used well I, I won't say that particular species but plants in the goosefoot family are also used to make soap they're used to make dyes especially a red dye they're used for medicine and they're also used as a salt substitute because goosefoot family plants have a tendency to absorb salts from the soil um, and that's why they recommend boiling them same with spinach uh, because they can contain oxalic acid spinach contains a lot of oxalic acid that's one of the wild plant ingredients that they warn you about but spinach is full of it and they don't ever give you that warning for spinach um, 
but it can absorb nitrogen and selenium and stuff from the soil. Those are all salts. And if you're in a garden environment, you know, a lot of people put chemical fertilizers in their garden and those chemical fertilizers are salts. That's what they are. They're salts of the earth. And that plant, the goosefoot family plants are known to absorb those. So they always recommend boiling the plant before you eat it. If you boil it, it removes enough of those salts that it supposedly makes it safe to eat. Now I know plenty of people who eat the goosefoot and the amaranth raw, I, I do myself, but it's, I think it's important to put that warning out there because people should be informed, no matter how small the risk, I think it's important to inform people of potential risks and also to get them thinking about the way these plants grows and also get them thinking about the way our cultivated plants grow like spinach spinach is full of oxalic acid and there's a lot of wild plants that people warn you not to eat that contain oxalic acid but they don't contain anywhere near the amounts of oxalic acid that are in spinach and you don't get that warning on a can of spinach but that's pretty much going to wrap it up um, Thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful. And uh, if anybody has a video request on any of the topics I cover on my channel, I'd be more than happy to uh, do a response. Thanks for all the comments and support.